In today's episode, client wants us to create a design exactly like their ugly PowerPoint. We comply. You must come to work. Adventures in condo HOAs. So let's get started. Client wants us to create a design exactly like their ugly PowerPoint. We comply. As a designer, I try to educate my clients on design and why something has to be done a certain way. My agency is not cheap, so we make it quite clear that they are paying for our experience and knowledge, not some Photoshop monkey. Most of the time, my clients are appreciative and enjoy the extra guidance and professional advice. Occasionally, we get fun jobs. The sales pitch went well enough, the business owner, Bob, seemed like a decent guy and happy to trust our professional expertise. However, shortly after signing the deal, he brought on a new manager, Karen, who was put in charge of marketing, including the new website we were just contracted to do. It quickly became clear that Karen thought of herself as a multidisciplinary genius and despises us because she thinks she can do better than a professional design agency. Karen loves sending over incomprehensible design instructions and feedback in the form of design mockups she creates in PowerPoint. They as ugly as the devil's butthole after a strong curry, but we try our best to translate the abomination she birthed into good-looking professional design proposals that best reflects the intent of her ideas. Karen did not like it one bit. Karen was rude, uncooperative, and removed Bob from the email threads when we tried to reach out to him to get his opinion. When we sent over a design, she would be asterisk TCH about how it wasn't what she wanted, and scream over the phone while our team patiently explained why we couldn't design exactly as she wanted. Mainly, it would be ugly as heck and nobody would want to do business with them with a website like that. The last time Karen bitched about how we were stupid morons for not doing what she wanted, we got her on the phone with Bob. She was screaming incomprehensibly and nobody got a word in. Finally, Bob took her side and said Karen is extremely experienced and knows what she's doing. I want your team to follow every instruction, exactly as she asks. No problem. Once again, Karen sent over a ridiculous 70 MB PowerPoint. If we followed it exactly, it would look like a website from the 90s with the worst UX ever. We went through every little pixel of her PPT, asking her so do you want us to copy this? Exactly? To which she would reply with a smug yes. So we documented her instructions down to the letter to cover our asses. Once again, we asked Bob, are you sure? Reply, yes please hurry up and make those changes exactly as she asked. Okie dokie. We copied every ugly font choice, every terrible gradient, every hideous element into the design. We even went the extra mile to export the ugly lopsided shapes she drew as .png graphics, so it would all be exactly as she wanted. Then we sent the design over, here is the design, we have done everything exactly as instructed. Karen once again replied, taking Bob out of the loop, perfect. Now, it wasn't so hard to do things exactly as I asked, was it, winky face? We waited. Bob exploded, demanding a meeting the very next day to explain why we were delivering such shorty work. We go to the meeting and Karen starts demanding that we propose a completely new design. We presented all past designs, the document in which Karen confirmed that she wanted all the changes, the countless emails in which we painstakingly explained to her why her ideas suck, and finally, the last email in which she praised us. You see, Bob, after our last call with you, we had followed Karen's instructions to the letter, exactly as she had asked. She seemed very happy with it. I am confused, why the quick change of heart? I then pull out the contract and calmly point out the portion which stated the number of design proposals we would create. Karen had used up all of it. I had reminded her that she was limited to X number of proposals, but she clearly didn't remember any of it because she didn't bother reading our emails and would keep talking or yelling over us when she spoke on the phone. I looked Bob in the eye and told him he could either pay extra for each additional new proposal Karen wants or choose from the existing designs done. They ask for some time to discuss privately. We break for coffee. 
Well, Karen is extremely experienced in this field. We will go with the last design since it is exactly as she wanted. Even my intern couldn't hold back his surprise. As we drive back to the office, he asks, is Karen sleeping with Bob or something? Why does she have him by the balls like that? I shrug. It's his business, and we're getting paid anyway, and he clearly doesn't appreciate our design expertise after all. The less time we spend arguing with them, the more time we could use to focus on my appreciative, good clients. We make Bob and Karen sign off on the design and finish up the project quickly. Karen still tries to be difficult, but we stick to the contracted terms and she couldn't do anything. Two months after the project ended, I get a call from Bob. He began with some small talk about innocuous project-related business, but I realized it wasn't the purpose of his call. Karen had been fired after making more serious mistakes causing major losses to his company. He sounded contrite but did not offer any real apology. That's terrible, Bob. I'm so shocked. I thought Karen was extremely experienced and knew what she was doing. You must come to work. When I was a broke college student, I worked a cute little part-time job at a clothing store. Hours were flexible, at first anyway, and things were going well. But one day I woke up and felt off, wobbly, tired, cold, so very cold. Recognizing that I likely had a fever, I checked. To my surprise, the thermometer read 102. Oof. Knowing that I needed rest, I texted my manager the issue. Normally, this wouldn't be a big deal. However, as you can probably guess, flu season was upon us, and I wasn't the only one who caught it. Per retail protocol, I had to find someone to cover my shift. So I began texting. And texting. And texting. No response. I text my manager about an hour before I'm supposed to start, explaining that I'm clearly too ill to work and cannot find a suitable replacement. Mind you, the shift was only 4 hours, and I was mostly just a filler between two separate shifts. My absence would make them go from 3 to 2 people in the middle of winter. Basically what I'm saying is, they'd be fine. I get the response. If you can't find someone, you must come in. Corporate policy. Okie dokie, den. I'll be there in a bit. I got my roommate as backup, since she didn't want me driving when I could barely stand up straight, like seriously, I may as have been drunk. I got dressed in company sweats, and got my ride to work. Upon arrival, my co-workers were shocked. See, I wasn't just wobbly. I was sweating, flushed, shivering, the whole package. No one wanted to get near me. Clearly, I had a plague. I ask my co-worker for my manager. She comes, sees me and stops. There's a pause, clear sounds of gears turning. Go home. And that's how she never questioned me again when I told her I was too sick to work. And yes, I napped the whole rest of the day after the nursing staff at school checked if I needed hospital time. Adventures in Condo HOAs Background info, I have just purchased my first piece of real estate, a condo of my very own. It is on the third floor of a fourth floor building with a gorgeous lake view. Another important piece of info is that the previous owner apparently never cleaned. Like ever. They were the only owner since the condo was built in 2004, and it was absolutely disgusting when I moved in. I'm talking layers of dried on food spills all over the kitchen, used acne patches stuck to the bathroom cabinets, etc. Spent the first month bleaching the entire inside. And that my friends is when we arrive at our main story. As I noted, the gorgeous view was a huge selling point of this particular unit. It has a beautiful deck overlooking a great lake and pool. However, it was covered in slimy green mold slash algae. After I made the inside habitable, I wanted to get the deck in shape for the upcoming warm weather. I checked the rules documents and it said nothing about washing your deck so I presumed, like at my previous rental condo, that a courtesy heads up to those below you was the MO. I head down to the first floor, introduce myself to the neighbor two floors below, 
and let her know I'd like to power wash my deck. She tells me to go ahead and do whatever I need to do, just let her know when I settle on an exact day slash time. Great. Head upstairs to the second floor. Enter, neighbor Kelly. Kelly is a renter of 15 years and before I can even finish my request she just says no. No, that's definitely not okay with me. I explain that my deck is growing things and her response is just well decks get dirty, that's just how it goes. She's simply aghast that I would ask this inconvenience of her. She'd have to move her furniture. Unless the office explicitly gives me permission she is not on board. So come Monday morning, I head right to the office. Apparently Kelly is a known annoyance and the property manager and HOA board president are apologetic. Luckily the board is meeting tonight and they can draft a policy on deck washing. A week later, I get an email that Kelly has lobbied a member of the board and as a result, power washing of decks is not allowed. Apparently some neighbors dislike the sludge that drips down as a result. But good news. I can wash my deck the old-fashioned way with a scrub brush, garden hose, and soap. Cue malicious compliance. What would have taken 15 minutes of power washing turns into an entire day of scrubbing? I mix a homemade, eco-friendly, deck wash that needs to be scrubbed on, left to sit for 15 minutes, and then rinsed off. Due to the level of grossness, it took many many applications, and disgusting green suds are flying everywhere. Kelly is fuming. She did not realize that soap would be a part of the deal when I informed her of my new washing plans, I guess she thought she had successfully limited me to just a garden hose. She is very upset that there are suds on her windows and door. Threats of reporting me to the board ensue. Patio doors are slammed. Angry texts are sent. On my way to work Monday, I pop my head into the office. They had received complaints from Kelly and told her I had permission for everything. I have not heard from her since. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.